think the Pope wants to tell people that it's possible to achieve holiness in your everyday life, that it's not some unattainable goal out there in the, in the heavens and for saints who are kind of plastic, impossible uh, figures to follow. It's about finding sanctity in your everyday work and action, and particularly in serving the poorest, migrants, and those on the margins of society. I have lived with many saints, many saints, beginning with Mother Antoinette, uh, my own directors of novice, Mother Mistress. Those two were in the novitiate when I was a novice, and they were two saints. We rubbed elbows with them, but they were people so much down to earth so human, so understanding. They never put us down. They always encouraged, uplifted us. Uh, they just made holiness so appealing and so attainable. She, Mother Antonia, always the rosary in her hand because going from one place to another I mean, the novitiate is, is big, and there are long corridors, and going from one place to the other, she would say, Hail Marys. And she would say, throw Hail Marys, wherever you go, south, east, west, to all the people that live there, and tell the Blessed Mother to bless them, to help them, to protect them, especially the young. I think that my dad is a really holy person because he he's very selfless and he's like all about like the other person and he goes to work every day and he does surgery and he spends a lot of time with his patients and he has a lot of compassion for them. I'd really consider my dad extremely holy. Um, he, he really inspires me to want to be more holy and be closer to Jesus. Well, he's the one who really taught me to pray before I go to bed and pray before I go to eat and he also like the way he acts towards other people, like he has a lot of patience and stuff. I think that there, there's a whole group of holy people who are not recognized. They are the single parents, both male and female, who are raising the children alone and working two or more jobs to provide for their families. Also, I look around and I see some sisters in our community who are uncomplaining in their service to the others. Is my grandma. She prays for my family and I when we are like struggling with stuff. <clears throat> and we also can't really see her, so like it's always good. And then my last one is my mom and sister who passed away a couple of years ago when I was little. And I always knew that there was always an angel like looking over me and stuff like that. Well, I said my uh, great grandma because um, I think she always just had a way about her where she was always positive and like um, always just like talked about God and how um, like how she you know how he really helped her through a lot of stuff because she like lost her husband when she was um, like uh, like twenty years ago and like she mm -hmm. was going through like a really hard time with that. Well, so. my grandfather was a Russian Orthodox priest, so he always had like God with him. And I think he taught my mom and my aunt, um, and especially me, to just live out his lifestyle and God will take you on a journey, but like, it'll be fun. So I just think he was like supportive of other people and lived like a positive, holy life. I have, I have seen people holy and I don't would think that, you know, they do, they, they show the love of God by not putting a show, but by being natural mm -hmm. and uh, helping helping the the other person, the neighbor, without letting everybody know that they are helping, or or doing so much of charity that only God knows. And I have seen that in many in some people. Oh, my grandma. She talks about Jesus all the time. She's the one that really like uh, teaches me about the faith. So yeah. Oh, many. In fact, some of the sisters I live with now, uh, sisters who I know have been suffering for so many years and offered their suffering for vocations, for the sick, 
sisters who um, every day give of their best even though they're putting all you know all their physical strength into it because it's waning right now and the sisters that are always attentive to others and to their needs the person I like I know that's holy to me is my mom because um, she puts everyone before herself especially her children and her husband who has been fighting cancer you know. And can you tell me about a holy person you've lived with and what they were like? Well, there were many like that, but the, the one who impressed me was Sister Claire Perino. She has been my inspiration. She is a missionary from Torino. Her life, faith, trust, and joy, and God's will, smile, and spirit of forgiveness inspire me. You never heard the word of remark or blame for anyone out of her. Someone holy that I know would be my aunt. Um, my Aunt Joan, she is a sister and she dedicates her life to serving the poor and she takes a vow of poverty and that's very inspiring to me and she's always, everything she does is always in the name of the Lord. My dad, because even though he came from a past of lots of struggles and um, not a lot of faith in God, uh, now today he is very faithful and that's like inspiring to me. Okay, my dad is like one of the most holy people I've ever met. Like. He's always shown me like perfect love and he's just always been so kind and that's what I want to be. Because I could see in their faces, you could tell who really, I'm not a psychologist, but I could tell who is doing things for God and who, who isn't. My Aunt Eva, she's my godmother. Um, she's had some rough times in the past, but um, you can tell her faith is rock solid now. Um, it's really helped her become like a better person. And uh, you can really tell, she's a teacher now, so um, she really cares about her students and her family. And it's really easy to see holiness in our sisters who've passed. Their entire lives lived with such devotion and such, such fidelity. But then there's the holiness in the sisters that are around me every day. Those sisters, like Sister Mary and Kasperi, who will never say no when it comes to music or playing or anything. Even Sister Carmela, she'll sew anything, any hole, anything you got. Sister Livia, who's always ready. Sister Carmen and Sister Balbina, who are always planning, cooking, serving, small days, feast days. I think of Sister Amelia, who is constantly looking out for the needs of others and serving them in whatever capacity they need. And Sister Amelia, who will never say no to my needing yet another habit. You know, each and every one of the sisters consumed my prayer time, and really I just got so caught up with recognizing the holiness in everyone I've ever lived with. So I guess for me to go on would be really long. So I just have so many beautiful memories and so many so much to look forward to because there's so many sisters that I haven't even lived with yet and some that I want to go back and live with again. And that's my thoughts on holiness. Yes, I did live with a saint who was my dearest mother. With 13 children, she never showed she had a lot to do, although she was not a healthy person. Our home was always spotless. She never complained. She loved the Blessed Mother immensely. She said the rosary every single night with that and the children. We say, always begin again, start all over again. Well, that was Mother Lydia. When she, she, was, she used to love to tell this one story about when she was starting religious life and a mother Antoinette had asked her, what is the hardest thing for you to do? And Mother Lydia said, you know what, I find it very difficult to get up early in the morning. I don't know if I could do this all my life and you know, persevere in this. Well, Mother Antoinette said to her, do you think you could do it for today? And Mother Lydia said, well, I think I could. 
And then Mother Antenna told him, well, every day think that you're only doing it for today. And to me, this is, this is holiness starting all over again. Another thing about Mother Lydia was that um, Tuesdays were very special to her because they were days dedicated to the missions and she had just finished, and finished her term uh, visiting the, all the missions in our, con in our congregation. And so she always said whenever the missionaries needed a grace, they would ask, do it on Tuesday because they knew everybody was praying for them. Well, what another thing that amazed me too that Tuesday was special for her too because that's the day God called her to heaven to her complete union with God. What she was a very beautiful holy soul. Okay. Talk about cheerfulness too with Mother Lydia. It was her 90th birthday and we really had a big celebration for her and Sister Helen was a superior at that time. And so Sister Helen said to Mother Lydia, Mother Lydia, may you live to be another hundred years. And Mother Lydia looks at her and she says, don't wish that evil upon me.